Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Saturday, August 10th. This is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, we are at the end of Genesis. Genesis chapter 50, we made it. Um, so this is uh, the, the the last little bit where uh, Israel, Jacob, has died. Um, and we're kind of wrapping things up there. And kind of the, the big feature here is where his his um, all of Joseph's brothers start freaking out because they think now that that dad's dead, um, Joseph is going to take out revenge upon them. That for all that they all the horrible things that they did to him, Joseph was just playing nice while dad was alive, and now he's going to take it out. So they they kind of throw himself um, to uh, to his mercy, you know, like oh, your, your dad wanted you to be nice to us, dad wanted you to forgive us, <laughs> um, and they're they're very freaked out. But here's, you know, this beautiful text where, where Joseph tells them, look, <laughs> you're, you're, you're forgiven. God, what, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And I was thinking about, I mean, that, that's kind of the go-to verse. And actually, that's Genesis 50, verse 20. Um, wonderful verse. In fact, I did a whole, I think it was last Lent. I think it was Lent. Uh, where this last one, I did a whole sermon series on, on that verse. What, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And certainly there, there are so many wonderful ways that that applies, you know, points us directly to the cross, how, you know, what, what we meant for evil in, in, in putting Jesus on the cross and all of our sinfulness, um, all of our evil kind of manifests itself, you know, in, in, in how we see Jesus on the cross. It's, it's our sin that put him there. Um, and yet what we meant for evil, which was to cut God so completely out of our lives that we would kill his son. Um, God meant for good, that God used that, <laughs> that, that the cross to offer up his son as a sacrifice for our sins, that he forgives us, shows us mercy and grace and, and just wonderful, wonderful stuff, right? So I, initially I thought, you know, that's, that's the one I want to go with. But I opted to go with verse 21, the verse that immediately follows. And that is where, you know, Joseph has just said what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And he says, so do not fear, I will provide for you for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And I think, um, I think this, I mean, it, it's, I, I think that, you know, what you meant for evil, God meant for good, is, is, a, is a much, you know, weightier kind of theological statement that has so many connections. But I think it really kind of overshadows verse 21, which is a great tech, verse of comfort. That, you know, it's just the, the movement from, and, and what I see here is, is the movement from their, the, the, the brothers' fear and terror at what Joseph might do to them, at what might become of them, to the good news, you know, proclaim to them that what they meant for evil, God meant for good. Um, so, you know, Joseph was not going to take his wrath out upon them. So, you know, obviously good news, right? Um, so this would be a, a, a relief um, for them, but then it's, it's kind of the follow through that brings them that, that helps to restore them and, and, and confirm that good word, that good message to them. And that, you know, he, he assures them, do not be afraid. Okay. We get that a lot in scripture. Um, I will provide for you and your little ones. So, you know, it's, I'm not just, you know, my, my grace is not just for you. It's for your children and your children's children and their children. So um, just kind of ex exploding the, the, the grace down to through the, the generations there. Um, but then it's, thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So it wasn't just this kind of like, uh, you know, pronouncement of the gospel. And that was it. You know, this, sh this is enough. No, <laughs> um, it continues on where he, he comforts them. He speaks kindly to them. It is the way that, that he brings that gospel to them. Um, which I think is kind of a, a nice, crucial detail in this that, you know, um, 
<laughs> we, we, we don't just proclaim the gospel and then that's it. We, we don't just say, here's the good news. And, and we, we, we leave it there and like, okay, all right, I've, I've done my job. Let me go off. You know, okay, you're, you're good now, right? You, you've, you've heard the good news of, of Jesus Christ. Great. Good to go. Um, no, the, the, the work continues. Um, you know, we are to continually to continue to comfort those that we, we share the gospel with, to speak kindly to them. Um, it is this gentle kind of, well, <laughs> shepherding along, um, you know, which is obviously another huge image that we get of, of Christ and, and, and his, uh, and his, and, um, the church. He is the shepherd. We are the sheep. Um, so yeah, it's just this really, um, good reminder to us of, of how, you know, there, there's, there's this whole life of, of, of the gospel of living in it that, you know, certainly we come and <laughs> fearful of what we deserve, right? The, 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 the law convicts us and we are terrified by what our, our judgment should be. Right. And we hear the gospel and it's wonderful and it blows our mind. It comes out of left field. Like, wait, what? <laughs> you're, you're not going to hold me account accountable to my sin. You're just going to remove it from me and pretend it's like not even there. And, and this, you're not even pretending you're not even there. You remove it. <laughs> it's actually not there. Um, so yeah, that it goes from there to there and then to the continuing on of being comforted, speaking kindly, um, this, this continued life of living in the gospel, receiving it, um, and, uh, and having this good news applied to us every day. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, um, I think overlooked, <laughs> um, sadly overlooked little tagline to that, um, to that great verse in verse 20, verse 21 is, is nothing to sneeze at. So, um, I really like that one <laughs> if you haven't noticed. So, um, so yeah, do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. God tells you this. Do not, do not be afraid. Do not fear. You know, when, you, when you're waking up today and it's the same world that it was yesterday, falling apart all over the place, don't be afraid. God will provide for you and your little ones. Um, he will comfort you. He will speak kindly to you. He will, he will call you back to him again and again and again to forgive you, to, to wash you clean of your sins, to, to work repentance in you. Um, so that's just a wonderful, wonderful message. Good stuff. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this day. Hope you have a great day today. Hope you have a good weekend. And we'll be back at it on Monday. Um, I might be doing something a little bit different rather than going through each book of the Bible and, and doing one verse at a time. Um, so we're, we're probably going to try something a little different on Monday. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, so until then, peace be with you.